Welcome back to this episode of Grow. I am your host, Tyrone Ross. In this episode, you will see my conversation with my good friend, Justin Castelli, founder of RLS Wealth Management, finally got it right that time, and co-founder of the AGC. In this conversation, Justin goes way left um, with what I thought he would answer when we asked him about his best growth idea. Stay tuned for that. All my financial planners, he dropped the jewel for you. And lastly, we take it into some of the things that surprised him about setting up and starting uh, the AGC with his co-founder, Taylor Schulte. Enjoy the conversation. We'll see you on the next one. I appreciate you. All right, welcome back to this episode of Grow. I am your host, Tyrone Ross, and here with the man who needs no introduction, my friend, my homie, Justin Castelli, founder of RLS Wealth and co-founder of the AGC. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. No, thank, thank you for having, you know, having us. Give us your time, rather. Um, and, and let's just get right into it again. Everyone knows you as the content king. Um, you have really unique perspective at how you grow practices and how advisors should grow their practice. So I jump right in, sir, with you. Um, give us your best growth idea, not only for advisors in this time, but just of any time. So the expected answer for me is going to be content related, right? Yeah. Um, I agree with Taylor and Peter and Brittany and your other guests up to date on those different uh, the, the things that they've been doing and they talked about. So I think the one thing I'll throw out real quick is I think put yourself out there, put yourself out there through with the ways other people have already lined out, but I'm going to go a different angle. So doing all this content is great, but we can't forget the fact that we are advisors and we have to be helping our clients. And when mm. you come into the business, the best way to grow your business is through referrals. So I don't want to go down the referral track, but what I want to go to is in order to increase the number of referrals that you're going to get, your clients have to be happy. You have to be doing good work for them. And I think the best way to grow going forward is to take our planning and the plans that we create for our clients to the next level. So we're familiar with George Kinder's life planning. Roger Whitney has agile planning. And it's basically taking the values that our clients put the highest priorities to and making that the center of their financial plan. And I'm getting ready to start changing the language that I'm doing with my clients. I've already sent out an email. I'm building a video series to help my clients develop a mission statement. I have a mission statement. And then this mission statement is their purpose and then aligning their plan to that purpose. And the reason I think that's so important is everybody wants to retire. Everybody wants to go to college. We want to you know, buy a house. We want to help our kids through uh, whatever it might be. Those are the normal goals. Those are the goals that society says we're supposed to have. And I think going forward, we're living in an age where people want more than just the basics. They want to write their own story. They want to go after their dreams. They have higher ambitions than just what society says we're supposed to do. A lot of people are tired of being boxed in. And I think advisors are in a unique position to help people break that box, build the life that they want, and create this quote unquote, you know, hashtag best life. And I think to differentiate yourself as a financial advisor, as somebody who's really there to help their clients live their best life, really there to help their clients chase their dreams, whatever they might be, that all starts with a financial plan. So yes, we need to plan for retirement. We need to plan for emergency funds, estate planning, insurance. We need to do all of those things. And once those fundamentals are in, I think the next level is let's take that plan to make sure that while we go towards those long-term goals, you're living the life that you want to live and I'm going to help you do that. So I think it comes back to the plan. We need to make the plan more than just numbers and projections. We need to make the plan a living document that helps our clients mm -hmm. live the life that they want to live. And if you as an advisor can help your clients do that, I think that creates a relationship that, and a bond that will never be broken. And then they're going to become an advocate and they're going to be telling their friends about how their financial advisor helped them start this business or help them take six months off to travel the world because that was something that they really wanted to do. And a plan and refocusing the plan and restructuring the way we go about planning relationships is going to be the way that we can do that. So growth through planning. So my mentor, if and when he ever watches this, would be jumping up and down because that's all he cares about. He also, you know, living, breathing document, that was his thing. So growth through planning, I think is fantastic. Um, and I think our industry tends to get away from that a little bit. So I'm glad you brought us there. Now, I love you. I got to push back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Referrals. 
And again, it's not even a pushback, just your opinion. Do you think advisors should ask for referrals or do you think they should just do great work and then let the clients be advocates and, and broadcast on behalf of the work that they've done with that advisor? You saw my initial reaction, but I'm gonna step back from my... Right. Uh, you think what you do what you're comfortable with. I am not personally comfortable. Mr. And Mrs. Client, you know, we developed a great plan. Would you write down five names of people that you think I might help? Right. I could argue that if you really do that great work, you have every right to ask that and your client should want to help their friends out. I just don't feel comfortable with that because that's not how I operate. I'm very passive when it comes to growing my business, which is why the content game is so perfect. I can write what I want to put out there and let it be there and let people find me. So I will not be asking for referrals. I think you let your work speak for itself. I do think it is important to let your clients know that you are taking on additional clients, letting them know that you welcome referrals and would love to help their friends and family if, you, if they think that you can help, but not putting them on the spot. I don't know if anybody's really comfortable being put on the spot to give a referral. I think you let your clients know that you're taking on new clients, that you're willing to help, you have capacity. Here's how you can do it. Even maybe give them a process of, if you have somebody that you think I can help, here's the best way to get us connected. And then just walk away, let it go. And you might even just put that in the bottom of your quarterly email that you send out. If you know anybody that would benefit from us, our help, here's what you can do to get us connected. And just very passively let people know how to do it. But if you're doing good work, and your clients are living a great life and they're reaching their goals, they're going to want to tell people that they care about that aren't doing that, how they might be able to get there. And I want to circle back real quick too about you know, yeah. bringing it back to the plan. It's very easy to get focused on the marketing and the branding because that's the fun stuff to do for a lot of us. And it mm -hmm. does help our business grow. But again, at the end of the day, we're, we're advisors and people are paying us not to be marketers. We have to tell our story. We have to grow, but we have to go back to the financial plan. And that's really what's most important. That's what brings us the greatest value. You know, we've talked about before investment management's becoming a commodity, all these other things. You know, there's, there's software now that will do a lot of the tax projections for us, but helping a client identify their goals, identify their purpose, that's going to take a human being. It, that's going to take the soft skills that we develop in this business to almost be a therapist and get that out of our clients. Most clients, when they come in, they don't really know what they want. They want to retire. They, want to call, they don't know what's most important to them. It takes somebody who can listen, who could talk, and who can pull that out of them and then get those thoughts aligned into a plan. So it's not just, the, it's not just putting that plan out there for them to follow. It's also helping them realize what's most important to them, which is why I love Kinder's process with the three questions. Yeah. Go watch Scott Frank's human advisor podcast. He takes you through all of that. We I love that it. concept <laughs> of really getting the clients to identify what's most important to them. And then you check, well, is what you're doing line up with that? And then if not, let's make some changes. And that's why I like the idea of having a mission. Not that I can't, not that I don't want to do Kinder's planning, but the mission aligns more with the way I view things and I want that to be the guiding principle. And I have to help my clients figure out what that mission is. Right. No, I, I love, again, the, we could put fire emojis all over your head right now. The free jewels you're dropping is crazy. You're bringing it. So, no, I, I, and again, I, I couldn't agree more. And again, this is a conversation for another day, which is also why I believe, again, I think there needs to be a standard in this business. And I do think it needs to be the CFP. This is not the conversation for that. But I think, like you said, everything you're saying, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean that every advisor has to be a licensed CFP, but there should be a standard that you have to follow um, that if you were going to work with clients, it should have to always revolve around some type of financial planning. So I like how you went there. Um, I think there also needs to be a standard for a plan. Because great. Yes, financial, absolutely. financial plan as is as vague as financial advisor. Right. Like you can have Good a point. plan that is 70 pages long of fluff. That's nothing. Right. Carl right. Richards has a one page financial plan that is filled with nothing but actionable items. Right. And it is a true plan. So the whole CFP conversation. Great. I do agree. Another talk, another day, but what helps all of this fall in alignment is an actual like career path for somebody coming into the business. Right. That's another talk for another, another day. But right, I think right, we right, also right. have to define like, what is a financial plan? And it will, a financial plan will always be vague, but this is where we go to the CFP curriculum and say, these are the things that need to be addressed in everybody's financial plan. And there might even be some other ancillary things like wellness and health that could you pull in as well to round out this whole relationship. But 
the a financial plan is not a document that says you have a 95% chance of hitting your goals. A financial plan takes that data, takes that analysis, and then gives recommendations. It gives actions for the clients to follow that will drive them towards that and keep them on the right path. And then it's a living document. You know, we have to update that every year because circumstances change. Expectations for future growth changes. Goals change. Life changes. So it's not like a one-time done. And I think a lot of times advisors think it's this document that we get this confidence behind that's 30 pages long, but it's nothing because it's never implemented or it's not actually going anywhere for the client. It's just charts and graphs to make it look like we're doing something valuable. You don't need all of that. You just need to understand where your clients want to go, crunch the numbers to figure out what gives us the best chance of heading in that direction, and then make sure that you're building this out so they can actually live it and follow it. Right. And I will tie this up by saying, again, this is very important for you to bring this up in this conversation because I think this gets lost in financial planning. It's my responsibility is sometimes financial planning is waking up on Monday with $20 and having to stretch that money to Friday. So I think in our business, we have a very myopic way of what financial planning looks like. The most dedicated, impressive financial planner I've ever seen in my life is Carol Ross. So, you know, I, I definitely have a greater appreciation for people that actually have to financial plan, life plan, survival plan on a Monday simply to make it to the end of the day on Tuesday. So definitely a good, a good conversation. Again, something that should be more robust um, as, as we build out this conversation and we push one another to be better, right? Which is what the series is about. Um, grow, but grow responsibly, right? And grow with the intention of purpose and serving people. So, man, oh man, we, we're going way over here, but I love it. Um, so let's let's move now again into you know the AGC. We all know what the what the G stands for, um, but definitely <laughs> want to <laughs> definitely want to really again. For those that don't know, at the end you'll let people know where they can go to reach out to you and Taylor. Shout to Taylor, um, co-founder of the of the AGC, and where they can reach out to you and get more information. But right now, again, I think you, you guys are into this long enough where I want to ask you, what have you seen? One, what have advisors come to you with and saying, listen, I'm stuck in this area. How do I grow in this area? It doesn't necessarily have to be more clients, right? Whether it's sharing my story, whether it's becoming um, more in-depth planner, right? That type of growth. And then lastly, what have you seen, if anything, that has shocked you um, since you guys have started? And like I said, you have a, a really diverse group of folks, and I don't mean diverse is in the, you know, the industry trope right now, just diverse wirehouse, independent team, young, old. Um, so I, I, I'd like to ask you those two things in terms of, of tidbits you've seen that come out of starting the group so far. I do want to address the diverse part. We, it is getting better, but I do just want to take the chance to say that one of the, and we talked about this on the human advisor with you and Jason, one of our goals for the AGC is to create an inclusive environment. And I know inclusive is a buzzword, but we yeah. want it to be a place that everybody is welcome. Everybody feels comfortable. And I think we've done a great job in doing that. I just think it's been hard to get the word out to everybody. So I just want to publicly say that the AGC is for everybody. You know, right. Everybody from the standpoint of business model, CFP, fee only, hybrid, but also everybody. Like, men, women, black, white, gay, straight, like it does not matter. There, there is no group that identifies only with the AGC. The AGC is about growing. It is about moving our profession forward. And it is about giving the advisors of the future a place to collaborate and get better together. And that includes everybody. So one of my goals is I want the AGC to reflect the future of our business, which is not old white. It's, 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 it's multicolor, multi, it, it, that's what I want it to look like. So I just want to take the opportunity to say publicly, yeah. it is for everybody. Um, I know that we have to prove that. And I think that we have the foundation there that when people come in, they are welcome and they realize it is a safe place. Everybody has a voice and everybody there is to help each other out no matter what. So right. I wanted to just take the chance to say that. Um, what, what am I seeing? What are people growing? It's, it's all over the board. So you mentioned we have, when it comes to, you know, time in the business, type of business model, uh, a very diverse group of advisors. Some of it is growing about telling our stories. Some of it's, you know, really beginning to niche down and really get specific with the clients that they work. The advisors in the community are really looking forward. How can I, how can they make their business what they want it to be to create the life that they want to live and also do tremendous work for their clients. So it's a lot of conversations about the planning process and how do we, how do we leverage a one page financial plan and how do we bring the greatest amount of value to our clients? Honestly, there's very little conversation about investments. 
Uh, we have only had a couple of presentations of our 70 some presentations that were investment focused and they were more tech stacks that we, we could use to help us out. So it really is about the planning process and the relationship. Another big part of it is maintaining that balance between our personal and our professional life. So how do we become better spouses and husbands and uh, you know, parents and friends? Um, that's a part of it as well. So the growth has been all over. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we all hope to see that our businesses grow as well. That's the end game, but very few of it right out the gate is how do I increase my revenue in the next six months? It's longer picture. How do I build out my website to, to tell the story that I want future clients to know? How do I refine my client service model so that the experience my clients is getting my, my the experience my clients are receiving is better so it's growth in those areas and then there's a lot of collaboration that goes on which is very key to the success of the community if we have everybody coming in that's just a taker and not willing to share it would fold and there's right. a, a insane amount of sharing that goes on in that community and one of the things that yeah it surprised you and so one of the things that surprised me is just to see how a community can take somebody and catapult them up in levels of confidence and growing their business in such a short amount of time. There's a handful of advisors I can think of that kind of came in and it wasn't that they weren't confident in being an advisor and their ability to do their job, but just kind of not sure of where they were in their career path and not sure of where they were was heading the right direction. And then they found them because where they were did not really identify with their views. Then they come into this community and they find a community of people that are like-minded in the way that they view our profession and view taking care of our clients that gives them the confidence that in a setting that may not promote that to, to hold those core beliefs there and then be more vocal about it. So I can think of an advisor that she came in and was real quiet early on. And after a few sessions and connecting her to a few other people, like I see her on LinkedIn with these tremendous posts telling her story where I don't know if where she's at would really want her to be doing that, but she is taking control of her destiny and maybe she would have, but I don't think that she would be doing that and on the path that she's now on if it wasn't for the community and the people in there and the connections that she made from it. And there's a number of advisors that fit that same story. So I just think the big surprise to me was how much a community really can help somebody in a short amount of time jump, start their career. Awesome. I love it. So again, if someone is watching this and there's no doubt there's someone that is watching this now that wants to read out, reach out to you and join the AGC, how would they do that? Best place to reach you, get information from you um, on any and all platforms. Go. So AGC is advisorgc.com. And then the best place to go would just be to Twitter. So my handle is at Justin Castelli, but it's JUS10. Castelli, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I. -L -L and from there, you can get to my website that takes you to LinkedIn, to YouTube, to the blogs and all that stuff. So Twitter would be the home base to go find some stuff and also the best place to come engage and, and talk and set up Zooms outside of social media. As for us, while you're on the YouTube page, please like, subscribe, and share. And oh, please check out our new series, Learn with our Director of Community, Brittany Castro, and of course, the Human Advisor Podcast. Check us out at alchemist.com. We'll see you on the next one. I appreciate you.